How's it going guys? Recently I have been testing and carrying a bunch of EDC knives and tools and I thought it'd be cool to make a quick video showing you kind of the four that have stuck in my pocket the longest as I've been playing around with them. And the first one to kick it off is the MKM Micro. Now the MKM Micro is kind of an interesting knife all the way around and I've put it through some interesting tests, but just to knock some specs out real quick, it's 4.33 inches overall. It's a 1.97 inch blade, blades made out of Bowler M390, and then you can get it in a micarta or a G10 handle variation. Now, it's a very small knife, but there are two things that really drew me in to the Micro. I've been looking at the concept and idea of carrying a fixed blade in pocket. So not on the belt, not on a neck knife, but in pocket. So obviously a small knife like the Micro seems like it could be something that would really fit that bill. One thing that really drew me to it was that it was a Jesper Voxnez design because there's no getting around the fact that this is a very small knife. Now, if you don't know, I've got a bit of a love affair with Jesper Voxnez and his designs. And the Micro is awesome because Jesper is a master at making small knives feel a lot bigger than they are. And again, there's no pretending. The Micro is a very small knife. But even with as small as it is, with my medium-sized hand, I can easily get three fingers on the back of this knife and have all of that Warncliffe blade out front to work with. On top of that, you get a couple other little Jesper touches, like the jimping on the top of the blade, and then a little bit of jimping on the back just for a little extra purchase. But the jimping on the front is great because you can lock your thumb on that and really get in and use that warning blade, or you can put your index finger on it to get some more detailed cuts and stuff like that going. That was one of the first things that really drew me to wanting to carry the Micro, try the Micro out. The second thing is the sheath that comes with it. Now, uh, you guys have probably seen this sheath before here on the channel. MKM makes this really interesting leather sheath that is magnetic. So you put the knife inside of the sheath piece and then it just magnets to around the material of your pocket. So your knife sits on top of your pocket and this is basically like a pocket clip on a pocket knife. Now, this is cool for a lot of reasons. I really love this sheath. I really loved applying it to different slip joints and stuff like that. But to see it used on a fixed blade, I thought was really neat as well. So that was another thing that drew me to the Micro was the sheath and knife combination. Now, in practice, I, as you guys know, here at Fort Wild, we're under a huge remodel. And once we get somewhere that I can actually show some stuff off, I'll show you guys kind of how progress is going. We're in the basement currently. Uh, looks a lot different than the last time you guys saw it. And I decided to put the Micro through the paces kind of in a construction remodel environment. And the reason is, is I was particularly interested to see how the knife and sheath would do in an environment that was going to be forcing the knife and sheath in different kind of contortionist ways, right? So putting a drill and a measuring tape on the edge of my pocket, for example, and still having the Micro attached, I thought would be a really great test case study to see how this thing would do in real life with getting bumped around, getting jolted around, and getting moved around, um, since it does present itself above your pocket. And I got to admit, it performed awesome. I really, really enjoyed carrying the Micro. And what I found was is that the Micro sheath is actually a little bit different than the magnetic sheath, the other magnetic sheaths that MKM makes in that it pivots on the back of the sheath. So not only does the knife move around if it gets bumped, the other cool thing about it pivoting is that you can carry this as a full in-pocket little fixed blade simply by pivoting that out and then putting the magnet around the front of the thing. So now that knife will never come out and you can slip it directly inside of your pocket for a full in-pocket fixed blade knife. There's like a little design things about this that I just really, really love. Um, another cool thing that I didn't think about and I had an experience with my folding knives when it comes to this magnetic sheath is that the magnet and the fixed blade knife blade directly touch each other. So the Micro stays in the sheath without coming out really well because not only does it fit inside the sheath pretty nicely, but it's also like magnetized to the sheath as well. So like, I'm not holding the end of the knife blade right now and that knife's not even moving. So I found that it actually held really well as well. So if you were to lay down in the grass or you, you know, maybe riding a motorcycle, you're sitting in a weird position, you're not gonna have to worry about your Micro finding its way out of your pocket. So not only does it work as a great pocket clip, uh, you know, to go around the edge of your pocket, it also works to lock the knife itself into Position. Something to consider with that that I also found was kind of interesting uh, is obviously you're rubbing your the metal of your knife against the magnet in the sheath. So this will actually magnetize the end of your knife. I didn't find it to be a problem. I didn't find it to be a weird thing. I just found it to be interesting because it was just something I hadn't considered before actually carrying the Micro and 
having that experience, I guess. MKM actually sells a secondary sheath kit, like a Kydex clip with an Ulti clip and some like little leather strips and a big leather lanyard type thing. So you could carry this as a neck knife and with the Kydex setup, you could carry it on your belt or you could carry it with the Ulti clip. All great options that could work for different scenarios that you might have, but I'll be 100% honest, the versatility of this like magnetic leather sheet that they have probably covers all the bases that you're going to need. And again, I just love the fact that I can take that thing, lock it in, and I can throw that in my pocket, I can throw it in my backpack, it's magnetized, it's strapped, I don't have to worry about that knife coming out of the sheath. A final quick note on the Micro is that the sheath itself is also ambidextrous, which is really important for me because for some reason, my entire life of carrying fixed blades, I instinctively go to put the knife in the wrong direction. I couldn't tell you why, I just always do it. So I love ambidextrous sheaths. So all in all, the Micro is one of the knives that I've been carrying recently that I'm really, really digging. I found it to be way more versatile than I anticipated and it still checked all the boxes that I wanted to. All right, jumping into the second knife, I have to first tell you guys about our Patreon. Thank you everybody who has signed up to the Patreon, means a lot. If you sign up over there, you are effectively a channel sponsor, help us determine what videos to make, and I'm making everybody who signs up a lucky penny. So when I was traveling on the road when I was younger, didn't have a lot of money, I'd make these pennies, put words on them, sell them for food and gas and things of that nature. So on Patreon only, I'm making a lucky penny that says wild on it. And uh, if you go over there and sign up, you help the channel, put gas in our tank, and you get a lucky penny. The second knife that has been kicking around in my pocket a lot lately is the Kaiser October Mini. Now, this is a Dimitri Osarenko design, 6.22 inches overall. It's got a 2.54 inch blade and uh, it's a 154 cm blade with my car to handles is the variation that I went with because, you know, of course, it's got a two-way reversible pocket clip, nice liner lock, really subtle little flipper tab on the back end, a little jimping across the spine for a little bit of a better grip. Overall, it's a good knife. It's a good little knife. If you like the material, if you like the shape, definitely I could recommend this knife just as something great to get. Design-wise, it kind of falls into that Polar category. You guys know that I'm a big fan of the Polar or the Polarge. This is probably a little more Polarged size. But I will say one thing that's really interesting is this is part of the Vanguard series, so it's part of the less expensive knives that Kaiser makes. But the action is just a little weird. It's just not as smooth as I would anticipate, but no reason not to carry it. I mean, you can see here, it's got my patented pencil sharpening marks. I've also been using this while doing some remodeling here at Fort Wild. I've carried this in my pocket quite a bit on the road as well, and a uh, great little pocket knife. Now that leads us directly into the Power Pint. Obviously not a knife, but a pretty capable EDC tool. This was actually sent to me by my buddy Taylor over at Best Damn EDC. Uh, he likes it so much, he literally bought it for me and then sent it to me in the mail. You guys know that I really love my Victorinox Compact. I've really been looking for something that has pliers that maybe I can put in my pocket daily that maybe replaces the Compact. Right out of the gate, it does have pliers. It folds up, folds out. It's got this compounding leverage technology that SOG has. It's these little gear things. It's probably the first thing you're gonna notice when you go to use them. And really what that does is that just helps to magnify your grip strength, really, as you're clamping onto things with it, as you're grabbing things with it, or as you're cutting things with it. Um, this is going to do it with a lot less pressure from your hands than say something, another tool of this size. Another cool thing about the pliers on the Power Pint is that they're a pretty full size set of pliers. Like if you were to compare this to the Gerber Dime for existence, kind of very similar multi-tools in a lot of ways, similar price range, similar size range, but the pliers on the Power Pint are actually way bigger than the ones that are on the Gerber Dime or even something like the Leatherman Squirt. So really cool, really useful pliers that you'll find on the pint. Now, when you close the pint up, that's when it kind of turns into the multi-tool that it is. You do have a pocket clip and a lanyard piece on it. I've just been carrying it with a pocket clip. It's worked really well. Just great to have a pair of pliers on your hip that doesn't weigh you down, doesn't take up a ton of space. Now we're gonna get into the tools on the power pint. And I think that there are some really fun, interesting things on this thing, but I also think there's a couple key misses on this thing that I would like to see differently. So on the power pint, you know, you've got like standard fare, like scissors and flathead screwdrivers, Phillips screwdrivers, which we're gonna get to in a minute. Combo blades, straight blades. Uh, this has a pretty good awl on it, actually. If you check out the awl video we did here on the channel recently, I actually sew some stuff with it. It worked pretty dang good. A seatbelt cutter, which is really interesting. And then like a jeweler's flathead screwdriver for glasses or electronics or something of that nature. And then a three-sided file. A really good spread of tools for such a compact tool. All of them work really well. But like I said, there's, there's a couple misses here. And one of those misses for me personally is there's nothing to pry with. 
So for an EDC tool for me, I pry on things all the time. I'm constantly needing to pry with something and obviously I don't wanna break the tip on my knife. I don't wanna break my knife edge. So I need a pry tool on me pretty regularly. In my mind, it just makes sense to lump that in with a bunch of other tools, like on the Victorinox Compact. Funny thing is, is before we started shooting this, I was talking to Jamie about this idea and he's like, dude, like a pry bar is not essential. He's like, I don't pry anything ever. So if you don't need a pry bar, the power pint could be a good little tool for you. Another thing that I think is a pretty big miss with the power pint actually comes with the Phillips head screwdriver. So Phillips head screwdriver is something that's essential for me to have on a multi-tool. I modified my compact so that it had a Phillips head screwdriver. The interesting thing with the one on the power pint is this is not a full sized screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver. This is not a number two Phillips head. So I've tried it on a handful of different screws in different scenarios. It'll kind of grab some of them. It really won't grab a lot of them. And I think that that's a huge miss because that is the most common Phillips head you're going to encounter in the world is a number two Phillips head. Something of an interesting note, closing the power pint as well. These are all locking tools, which I think is awesome, but to close it, you actually have to open up the pliers and push down on the locking mechanism that releases the lock on the tool you're using. So you have to open the pliers, hit the release, and then you can close the tool. Now, a little hack or workaround, or maybe even the way that SOG intended for this to be, if you open any tool on that side about halfway, it will disengage the lock, and then you can close whatever tools that you have going. So not necessarily a deal breaker, just something to consider, a little workaround that you have to do. Overall, I think that the Power Pint is so close to being a great tool, especially for my specific uses. But I will say that if you're looking for something compact, lightweight, and affordable to use in your EDC kit, this thing rocks. Like it's, it's actually pretty awesome. It just misses in a couple key spaces that I personally need with my EDC stuff. Now, I mentioned that the number two Phillips said, so I'll just show you really quick. The end of the tool does have a quarter driver, which I thought was kind of interesting. And, and I think that it's kind of a fun design piece for sure. And it fits a quarter driver in really great. You can put something like this regular number two Phillips head in. You can put an extension Phillips head in, which in my mind probably makes just a little more sense because now you get like more of a proper screw drive action. You can even put the Leatherman ratcheting drive in the end of this thing, which is also pretty cool you know, when you think about it, because again, now you're getting almost a full size screwdriver here. The only thing that rubs me wrong with that is that that would be the option you would need for a number two Phillips head driver. And I don't want to carry more tools than what's currently on my tools. So again, the power pint is a great little tool. It's not for me as I found using it the last little while, um, but it could be for you. One more quick little note about the power pint, kind of a weird little thing that they built in. It actually has degree markers on the uh, black piece here where the gears go, and it works as a protractor, I guess. I don't think it would be a very accurate protractor, but I don't think I've ever seen another multi-tool with a protractor built in, so kind of fun. And to round it all out with what I think has ended up my favorite that I've been carrying in this last time period is the Kaiser Deviant. Now, there's a Chris Conway design, 7.25 inches total length. The blade is a three inch blade, M390. And then you can obviously see it has copper and my carta on it, which is pretty awesome. Now, the weight on this thing is at 4.89 ounces. And the reason that I'm even gonna like add that is sometimes when you add copper denies, they get unnecessarily heavy. I don't think that's the case at all with the Deviant. It's got a single position deep carry pocket clip here on this side, thumb stud opening. But really at the end of the day for me, it's really smooth. I like all the lines, all the shapes of it. Um, kind of a theme this time around, a lot of Warncliffe blades, but uh, yeah, it's got, it's got a Warncliffe blade on it, uh, modified sheep's foot blade, whatever you wanna call it. As you know, big fan of my Carta, not only for grip, but also for the thing kind of becoming your own just through use. And the same goes for the copper bolster. So you can see here, I've been carrying this enough that the copper's already starting to go, that my card is already starting to take a patina. And uh, yeah, I think out of this period, the micro is real close, but the uh, Kaiser Deviant comes out just on top because it's so smooth, it's such a nice knife, and it has all the materials that I love. M390, copper, and my Carta. So, Great little knife, something you wanna check out. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I get the opportunity to test and carry a lot of different knives and tools. I don't always have an opportunity to make a video about every single one of them. So I thought it might be interesting to just throw a couple out there that may not get the full spotlight, but uh, give you guys a little rundown just to let you know what's out there. Hope you guys have dug it. If you have, go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button. It really means a lot. Always down in the comments, so go down in the comments. I wanna hear what you guys are carrying. I wanna hear what you guys think of these knives. Some of them aren't even brand new, so I'd love to hear what your experiences have been with them. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.